Get ready to explore the OPEC oil crisis of 1973, a major event in modern economic history that affected countries across the globe. This crisis was sparked by the decision of the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, led by Arab oil producing countries such as Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Iraq, to impose an oil embargo on countries that supported Israel in the Yom Kippur War. As a result, many countries in Western Europe, including Germany, France, and Italy, as well as Japan and the United States, were heavily impacted by the resulting increase in oil prices. In this video, we'll examine the causes, consequences, and key locations involved in the OPEC oil crisis of 1973, so you can get a better understanding of this important historical event. Early 1967, tensions were running high between Israel and its Arab neighbors, including Egypt, Jordan, and Syria. On June 5, 1967, Israel launched a surprise attack on Egypt, igniting the six-day war between two sides. The assault destroyed much of Egypt's air force on the ground. This was followed by a ground offensive in the Sinai Peninsula, which led to Israel capturing the Gaza Strip and the Sinai. Israel then launched attacks on Jordan and Syria, capturing the West Bank, East Jerusalem, and the Golan Heights. The war had significant geopolitical consequences, with Israel emerging as a dominant military power in the region. It also led to the displacement of thousands of Palestinians who fled or were forced to leave their homes in the newly captured territories. More than five years later, on October 6, 1973, during the Jewish holiday of Yom Kippur, an Arab coalition led by Egypt and Syria launched a surprise attack on Israel in the hope to regain territory lost to Israel, particularly the Sinai Peninsula and the Golan Heights. The attack was also aimed at forcing Israel to negotiate the return of Palestinian territories. The initial stages of the war saw significant Arab advances, catching Israel off guard and leading to heavy casualties on both sides. The conflict quickly drew in other nations, including the United States and the Soviet Union, and threatened to escalate into a wider regional war. However, Israel eventually regrouped and mounted a strong defense, retaking lost territory and ultimately emerging victorious after three weeks of intense fighting. OPEC which stands for the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, is a group of countries that cooperate to manage the production and price of oil. In 1973, OPEC consisted of 12 member countries, including Algeria, Indonesia, Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Libya, Nigeria, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, the United Arab Emirates, and Ecuador. OPEC countries produced about 55% of the world's oil supply. In the early 1970s, OPEC had become increasingly dissatisfied with the low prices it was receiving for its oil. In response, the organization decided to take action to increase the price of oil by cutting production and demanding higher prices from oil consumers. This led to a crisis in 1973 when OPEC announced an oil embargo against countries that supported Israel during the Yom Kippur War. In the aftermath of the Yom Kippur War, Tensions were high between Arab nations and countries that supported Israel, including the United States, Canada, Japan, the Netherlands, Portugal, and South Africa. In retaliation for the U.S. decision to resupply the Israeli military and to gain leverage in post-war peace negotiations, Arab members of the OPEC imposed an embargo on these countries. The embargo banned petroleum exports and introduced cuts in oil production, exacerbating an already unstable pricing system that had been destabilized by years of negotiations between oil-producing nations and oil companies. The embargo caused a sharp increase in oil prices and led to widespread shortages in rationing. It also highlighted the vulnerability of the world's economies to disruptions in the global supply of oil and exposed the power that OPEC held in the international energy market. The oil embargo caused the average U.S. retail price of a gallon of regular gasoline to rise nearly 350% from $3 per barrel to nearly $11 per barrel, resulting in a significant negative influence on the U.S. economy. It led to disruptions in production, distribution, and prices that led to recessions, excessive inflation, reduced productivity, and lower economic growth. The embargo also changed competitive positions in many industries, such as automobiles, the macroeconomic impact consisted of both inflationary and deflationary effects, and the oil companies had to search for new ways to increase oil supplies, even in rugged terrains such as the Arctic. 
the state governments asked citizens not to put up Christmas lights. President Nixon asked gasoline retailers to voluntarily not sell gasoline on Saturday nights or Sundays, causing long lines of motorists wanting to fill up their cars while they still could. The American Automobile Association reported that in the last week of February 1974, 20% of American gasoline stations had no fuel, and some states used a three-color flag system to denote gasoline availability. Western Europe was impacted differently by the oil embargo, with the UK, Germany, Italy, Switzerland, and Norway banning Sunday driving, flying, and boating, and Sweden rationing gasoline and heating oil. The Netherlands imposed prison sentences for those who exceeded their electricity ration, while the other six members of the European Economic Community, EC, faced partial cutbacks. The UK, despite being an ally of Israel, faced little direct effect from the embargo but faced an energy crisis due to a series of strikes by coal miners and railroad workers. The strikes became a major factor in the defeat of the Conservative government in the 1974 general elections. The EEC later issued a statement that was viewed as pro-Arab, and OPEC lifted its embargo from all EEC members, but the price rises had a much greater impact on Europe than the embargo itself. Japan was heavily impacted by the oil crisis due to its heavy dependence on oil imports, with 90% of its oil coming from the Middle East. The government responded by implementing a 10% cut in industrial oil and electricity consumption, followed by a 20% cut for major industries and leisure automobile usage. The crisis caused economic growth to decline and inflation to rise. Japan sought to diversify its oil suppliers, invest in nuclear power, and implement conservation measures to ensure future oil flows. The crisis led to a shift in the Japanese economy away from oil-intensive industries towards electronics, and Japanese automakers benefited from the crisis due to the popularity of their small, fuel-efficient models. In the long run, Japan maintained strong ties with the United States while providing funding for Arab governments and Palestinians. The oil crisis had a significant impact on the automobile industry, leading to a shift in consumer demand towards more fuel-efficient vehicles. Japanese imports, such as the Toyota Corolla and Honda Civic, became popular due to their smaller, more efficient engines. This led to American automakers responding with their own compact models, such as the Ford Pinto and Chevrolet Vega. Additionally, the crisis led to the development of compact trucks, such as the Toyota Hilux and Datsun truck. Federal safety standards and regulations also played a role in downsizing vehicles, with GM's full-sized cars reflecting the crisis by 1977 and Chrysler moving towards a full front-wheel drive lineup in 1982. Despite some sales recovery of larger sedans, American cars became more fuel-efficient over time, with the average fuel economy improving from 13.5 miles per gallon in 1970 to 17.4 miles per gallon in 1985. To reduce consumption during the oil crisis in the U.S., a national maximum speed limit of 55 miles per hour was imposed through the Emergency Highway Energy Conservation Act, and year-round daylight saving time was implemented from 1974 to 1975. The Strategic Petroleum Reserve was developed in 1975, and Department of Energy was created in 1977. The federal 55 miles per hour speed limit was also ended in 1995 by President Bill Clinton, allowing states to restore their prior maximum speed limit. 